Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. It is estimated that this monumental geographic spectacle began to form around 1.84 billion years ago. Grand Canyon Genesis and the Native American First Nations. Continue watching to find out more. If you hear the phrase, Yate, that means hello in the Navajo language. My name is Ben. The faithful people of the Navajo Nation strive to maintain harmony with all beings on Mother Earth and are grateful for your loving, life-protecting vegan lifestyle. Welcome to Grand Canyon Genesis and the Native American First Nations. The iconic Grand Canyon, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is situated in the southwestern state of Arizona in the United States. Stretching across 277 miles or 446 kilometers in length up to 18 miles or 29 kilometers in width and as far as 6,000 feet or 1.8 kilometers in depth, this immense and astoundingly beautiful landmark is also visible from space. It is estimated that this monumental geographic spectacle began to form around 1.84 billion years ago when igneous and metamorphic rock melted at the inner gorge. Named Vishnu Schist after the venerated Hindu god Lord Vishnu, the ancient bedrock originally took the form of mountains, which geologists believe may have been higher than those of the present-day Himalayan peaks. Over the next billion and a half years, the peaks of the schist were worn down by intensive erosion. Ancient oceans rose and fell, placing layer upon layer of sediment over the bedrock. These layers include Kaibab limestone and Coconino sandstone, shale, seashells, and other marine fossils. Like the rings of a tree, each segmented layer is unique recording an environmental description for each particular geological age. The fossils date from between 1.2 billion years and 270 million years ago, but there are no dinosaur fossils, as all the rock layers within the Grand Canyon predate the dinosaur period. Geologist Clarence Dutton visited the Southwest in the 1870s and deduced that the entire Colorado Plateau had been formed and uplifted like a massive staircase. He named the layers pink, gray, white, vermilion, and chocolate, references still used today. The raising of the Colorado Plateau to its present height occurred between 70 and 30 million years ago. Six million years ago, the Colorado River was born and the erosive power of some 500,000 tons of water per second has carved through the ancient layers of rock to form the present canyon. Also etched by Mother Nature in the Grand Canyon are approximately 1,000 caves. Only a third of them have been officially visited and very few have been formally recorded or mapped. Only the Cave of Domes on the Horseshoe Mesa is open to the public, although permits can be sought for other caves for scientific research. Most of the caves were formed in the Muav and Redwall limestone layers. In 1933, 4,000-year-old Native American figurines made of split twigs depicting horses, sheep, and deer were found at Stanton's Cave. The cave continues to be home to a large population of Townsend's big-eared bats, 
and is now kept closed with bat-friendly bars excluding human visitors. The Grand Canyon contains several major ecosystems and is home to more than 1,500 plant, 440 bird, 90 mammalian, 47 reptile, 9 amphibian, and 17 fish species. Sadly, the impact of climate change and environmental degradation is felt in the Grand Canyon National Park. The California condor is threatened with extinction, and California's bighorn sheep populations have dwindled from 80 to 30 locations as warming climates and reduced precipitation have had dramatic consequences on water availability throughout the Southwest. All information concerning the scientific evidence of climate change and its solution is in Supreme Master Cheng Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace, free for download at crisistopeace.org. We'll take a few moments for a brief message and return soon here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Grand Canyon Genesis and the Native American First Nations. The series of small canyons, buttes, mesas, mountains, terraces, and caves that make up the Grand Canyon are special to the Native American Indians who first called this place home and built the First Nations. When exactly humans first began to live at the Grand Canyon is uncertain, however, Eleven Native American First Nations have intrinsic cultural ties to the area, with six currently maintaining communities there. The Grand Canyon has many archaeological sites, some of which can be visited, showcasing a variety of insights into the lives of the First Nations ancestors, from the remnants of granaries, walls, and foundations, to roasting pits and pottery fragments. The Zuni, or Oshui people, renowned for their construction of cliff dwellings and multi-storied houses, have lived in the southwest of the United States for thousands of years as part of the Puebloan Native Americans. They possess a language that is unrelated to any other Native American speech. According to legend, the Zuni emerged from a series of underworlds to appear atop of Mother Earth at Chaimic Yanakaya Deya, or Ribbon Falls, at Bright Angel Creek, a tributary of the Colorado River, in the Grand Canyon, a place, it is said, where time and the reality of the fourth world, or dimension, began. For the Zuni, this place is sacred as a reminder of their connection to Mother Earth. Oh! The Hopi are considered a cousin First Nation of the Zuni Pueblo, and today around 7,000 Hopi still live in and around the Grand Canyon. Oribe Village is recognized as the longest continuously inhabited township in all of the United States. Hopi legend describes its people ascending from the underworld through a doorway to the Earth's surface, or Sipapu and transforming from lizard-like creatures into human beings. They were also greeted by Masa, or skeleton man, who entrusted to the Hopi the gift of living upon the surface, also instructing them to live in harmony with it and to find their central place. The Hopi then divided with some traveling around the earth in a clockwise direction, others counterclockwise leaving distinctive spiral artwork where they rested. Masa eventually made a sign in the form of a bright light in the sky over the Grand Canyon that signaled to the Hopi that this was the spiritual home they had been looking for. Sipapu, the point where the Hopi originally emerged upon Mother Earth, is located in the Grand Canyon, along with other spiritually significant Hopi landmarks such as Coal Mine Canyon, 
and Blue Canyon. Salt collection from the remains of the Hopi Nation's sacred salt mines has been a ceremonial ritual undertaken by the Third Mesa Boys, marking the transition to manhood. Today, the Hualapai First Nation is the caregiver of approximately one million acres within the western region of the Grand Canyon. A modern feature is the Grand Canyon Skywalk, a glass-floored bridge perched 4,000 feet or 1,220 meters above the Colorado River on the western rim. Petroglyphs found on rock walls in the canyons below depict scenes of an overwhelming ancient flood of biblical proportions, an event corroborated in legends and songs. The Havasupai are closely related to the Hualapai and were once part of the same First Nation. Today they maintain a headquarters 8 miles or 13 kilometers below the western rim in the deep gorges. The Havasupai creation legend describes the opposing gods Tochapa of goodness and Hokomata of evil. Tochapa had a child, Puke'e, whom he began to nurture as the mother of earth. Out of jealousy, Hokomata caused a flood to destroy Tochapa's daughter, but Tochapa constructed a raft from a tree trunk, and when the waters began to drain away, the raft came to rest on Spirit Mountain. The earth was warmed by the rising golden sun, causing her to conceive, and a male child was born. Later, earth conceived a baby girl with a waterfall, and humanity was born from the union of earth's children. The Havasupai were the first and were guided by the voice of Tochapa to make their home in the peace of the canyon, where the good earth and pure water would provide plenty for all forever. The Navajo Nation, whose people are also known as Diné, maintains the largest Native American region in North America, comprising 16 million acres, centered amidst the four state borders of Utah, New Mexico, Colorado, and Arizona. Although they had previously lived in the icy Northwest Territories of Canada for many centuries, the Navajos sought a safe haven hundreds of years ago and migrated southward, taking refuge in the Grand Canyon. The First Nation people of Kaibab Paiute still maintain 121,000 acres between the North Rim of the Grand Canyon and the Utah border and also have cultural and language affinities with the Utu Aztecan people. Their word Kaibab actually means mountain turned upside down, which effectively describes the ancient geological formation process of the Grand Canyon's metamorphic bedrock. With great awe for the magnificence of the Grand Canyon, and the rich history that it houses, we pray for the well-being and prosperity of all its inhabitants. May we follow the example of the First Nations and treat Mother Earth and all her inhabitants with appreciation and respect for the peace and welfare of our planet. For more information on the Grand Canyon, please visit nps.gov forward slash grca. It's been a pleasure to have you, our noble viewers, with us today. May your day be filled with wonderment and joy. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash nb. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule and suprememastertv.com bar oblique nb. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada nb. Programa de nuestra ofrece multe limpi. Va puter suita pe suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule y suprememastertv.com bar oblique nb.